Hello everyone, I'm journalist Jawan Strader and welcome to this Facebook Live edition with One United Bank. I am joined now by the president of One United Bank, Terry Williams, along with world-renowned artist Adonis Parker. He is joining us as well. Welcome. It is good to have a conversation a with you. Yeah, you. And you know what? We're going to touch upon a number of things in this conversation, including a, a big conversation that a lot of people have been having uh, in regards to your artwork and a new card with Harriet Tubman. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that, but let's talk about empowerment when it comes to One United Bank mm -hmm. and that empowerment when it comes to black folks and their money, Terry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... A lot of people don't know um, One United Bank, so it's helpful to have that context. Um, we are the largest black-owned bank in the country. Um, we are also the first black internet bank, so we're available anywhere in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, and our focus has actually been on uh, economic empowerment. We actually been in business for 50 years, uh, and we are four banks that were rolled into one: one in Boston, uh, one here in Miami and two in L.A. that were rolled into one, all of them black-owned. We've been black-owned our entire existence. I know that question is out there. Yeah. Uh, in addition to being the president, I'm also the <laughs> owner with my husband, who is also black. So it's just, <laughs> we're black. Um, so, um, so that's a, a, just a sort of some uh, background on us. And I, I think the other background that is helpful for uh, people to know is that it's not just about images or the card. Mm -hmm. Like, we're focusing on building wealth in the black community. And that includes uh, services. So we have, as an example, a second chance checking account. Uh, because 30% of our community has check systems records. Like, a lot of people don't even know what check systems is. That's right. Um, but it's when people have overdrawn their account, their account's been closed, that gives them a record that stops them from opening a bank account at any bank in the country. Mm. And we offer something called a second chance checking account, which allows them to open an account with us. I mean, that's one example. I can give you others. We, um, we also have a program to help people rebuild their credit. It's a secured credit card with a how to rebuild credit program. Mm -hmm. Because again, a large percentage, large, but about 30% of our community, when I say our community, I mean the yeah. black community, uh, has um, has bad credit. Um, we also offer first-time home buyer programs that we're really trying to encourage our community to buy, particularly in our neighborhoods, which are becoming gentrified. And we're like, hey, buy something. I don't get land, even <laughs> if you have to buy a hut. A hut. Um, and I remember you said that before. You and yeah, I have had this conversation yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. Even if you have to buy a hut, yeah. but it's about... Um, uh, economic empowerment right. for our people because a lot of us don't realize that by doing these things we are helping not only us but our families and uh, also future generations as well. Absolutely. In fact, we um, always say that we're only one transaction away from closing the wealth gap. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, you know, sort of say, what do you mean by that? But it's important for us as a community to know that first of all, we've only been free for 50 years. I mean, we, we did this project, uh, this program with the uh, New York Times 1619 project that really illustrates that we've only been free, legally free, for 50 years. Mm -hmm. We had 250 years of slavery. We had another 100 years of Jim Crow. We've only been free. We've been in this, in this country, take, brought here and enslaved in 1619, which is 400 years ago. We've only been free for 50 years. The gap between white and black wealth right now is about $180,000. And for a family, that could be one transaction. Mm. It could be buying a home. It could be starting a business. It could be ensuring that your, your parents have insurance. Like a lot of our parents pass away and not have insurance. Right. And so we, we want our community, I know there's, you know, we do believe in reparations. I don't want right. to say that's pretty. Um, but I know there are a lot of policy things we could do, but there's a lot of things that we can do individually. That's right. And so our goal as a black institution, a black bank, large black bank in the country, is to have our community focus on that one transaction. Now let's, let's talk about One United, and we see some images here right behind you. Mm -hmm. And you kind of touched on it a little bit because, as you said before, One United Bank is unapologetically black. black. Yeah. 
What do you mean by that when you say that? Mm -hmm. So um, it used to be that we described One United Bank as a community bank that just happens to be black. We did that for 45 years. And five years ago, um, we made the decision, the strategic decision, that we were going to speak in our authentic voice. It, it seems like that just should mm -hmm. be what one would do, but there was a lot of risk in that because people were saying to us, if you position yourself as a black bank, you know, white people aren't going to bank with you and black people aren't going to bank with you because they're going to feel like their ice is colder. Yeah. And I know a lot of old folks will know what that means. <laughs> uh, a lot of young folks will be like, what? You know, but that was the belief. Um, and yet we said, if we don't speak in our authentic voice, we cannot communicate what we think our community needs to hear. Right. They, can't, they will not understand it, nor will they communicate back to us you know, they, to give us really honest feedback. And we can't get better if we don't get that feedback. So, um, so that happened like five years ago. We actually engaged this artist, Adonis, who has done our work and all of our cards, as well as this mural project. Um, but we engaged him to really start to provide images that reflected the actual black experience. And yes, those images are very powerful. They, they are, um, you know, we call them sort of protest art. Yeah. You know, they're in your face. They're saying this is what's happening in our community that we need to address in a positive way. And you said five years ago. So yeah. that brings us over to world-renowned artist Adonis. Mm -hmm. and, and Adonis, you mm -hmm. have been working with One United for, for quite some time now on some of these pieces that we see mm -hmm. here right behind us. Yes. Since 2015, Since five two, years. Five years. Yeah. Since 2015. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of what, what some would say uh, black art when it comes to images right. uh, from our community, but with a purpose and a meaning behind those images. Mm -hmm. And one that is, of course, gained a lot of attention happens to be the Harriet Tubman on the new debit card mm -hmm. uh, from One United Bank. Explain that, that image of Harriet Tubman, where you see this the symbol right here that she is holding up. Explain that. It's interesting because um, when we first uh, heard about the Harriet, uh, Harriet Tubman was going to be on a $20 bill, we immediately jumped on it. Um, we wanted to have something to commemorate her uh, in power. We didn't know how she was going to look. So 2016, um, I created three of them, three versions of Harriet Tubman. I think one that was, uh, you, you know, <laughs> had a gun. Yeah, that was kind of cut out quick. <laughs> <laughs> then I had um, one of them was with the, was in the Blue family. Yeah. Okay. That was set to the side. But then this last Harriet, um, I wanted if somebody could look at it, I mm -hmm. wanted them to feel her, and feel the picture. Even if they couldn't, you know, if they couldn't hear, they could still see that universal love sign, which is interesting. And and I had it like this at first. And to fit the card format, we moved it up. And what, so, hold on, what year? Yeah. What, what, what year was it? 2016. There? 2016. 2016, yes. But some people out there see this as a Wakanda sign right. instead mm -hmm. of the love sign. Right. But this is something that you had back in 2016. 2016, if you look at her hand, it's not, uh, I think it's her right hand. If you actually look at the card, look mm -hmm. at the design, it's not Wakanda. Because you can tell I did it in 2016 because, because of the hand. If I really wanted to copy it, it would have been exactly, you know, but um, I, I, do, I do that a lot. I paint stuff before it happens. I, it's, it's in a lot of my work. So that's, this is nothing strange. We have, um, what's not foreign to us also, too, is uh, we have uh, car designs that are in the vault now and haven't been released. So, and I, and I think I mentioned it before we, you know, before I said that uh, there's, I know they had, a, you know, major problems with Harriet. And now that they're going to understand why she's like that. But then there's a car that's going to be even more, powerful than that that's going to come out that's going to shock everybody. Okay, well, yeah. we'll, we'll deal with that when yeah. that happens. Yeah. But let, let's get back to Harriet Tubman here. And mm -hmm. this is a universal sign. Right, of love. Sign yeah. of love. Mm -hmm. where, where did you even come up with that? Listen, I used to do that, uh, to what, two, that was in 1990, I graduated in 91. Mm -hmm. 1990 and in 91, I greeted my brothers on the basketball court like that. So we always did this, and then, we, then when we would get together in a huddle, we'll raise it up higher. We did that, oh, you know, because that's when I first got into uh, uh, African-American history. I mean, deep. 
And um, ever since then, I just embraced it. I never, it's just something that never left me. So, I mean, I got, I, I got so many people to bear witness of that, you know? Yeah. So that, this is nothing new. So when a movie yeah. comes out with Wakanda and they start doing it in the movie, right. what, what are your thoughts at I this did, point? At, when I looked at it, it was like it didn't shock me because mm -hmm. it's something that I was, you know, I thought everybody did that, you know? Yeah. So it just, it's just, it really, I knew, I knew where it came from, you know, sign language. Yeah. I didn't know that we started it. When I say we, I'm talking about we can go back in history centuries ago that, um, mm. yeah, so yeah, that we're descendants. Yeah, yeah, that was new. I did, yeah. uh, Ryan Coogler was saying yes. that he got that from the American Sign Language right. Gesture for Love, but also something from, uh, I think, Egypt or something. That was new, but I, there is a lot of talk about what is she doing. And um, we saw all of these, these three different versions of Harriet when we asked <laughs> uh, Adonis to paint Harriet in 2016 when the $20 bill was going to mm -hmm. be announced. And then last year, you know, we get this announcement that that $20 bill has been delayed mm -hmm. for some reason that mm -hmm. we think is suspect. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, said last year that we wanted to go forward with the card that we had planned to do uh, during Black History Month of this year to right. try to really push that conversation forward and say, you know, why is it delayed? I mean, I've been asking reporters, like, why is it that only white people are on money? Like, yeah. why is that? Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and I still haven't got an answer. And that's a legitimate question. Yes. And, and then when you think about Harriet Tubman and it's re Harriet Tubman's relation to what you just spoke about as far as One United Bank. Right. And you were talking about economic empowerment for black folks. Right. What a lot of people don't understand is that Harriet Tubman, she represented that. Mm -hmm. Harriet Tubman owned her own home. Right, exactly. And I think that's the other part of the story that uh, may be missed, is people talk about the abolitionist part of Harriet Tubman, which we all learned in elementary mm -hmm. school. Um, however, what is not talked about is the fact that Harriet Tubman bought her own home in 1851. And that home still exists. She bought that home in 1851. Then she bought 24 acres around that home in like 1859. And she did that to have a place to protect her family. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. that's so that economic empowerment legacy of Harriet yeah. Tubman is the part of the story that we're not told. And I, I spoke to her family when the six, uh, 2016, when, or it may have been a, a little while after that, when the announcement came yeah. out. And they were. Uh, very supportive of her being on the $20 bill because they said that economic empowerment was part of her legacy. And so, you know, what's mm. important for us as a community to understand, you know, they, they, everybody says, well, she was anti-slavery and she was an anti-capitalist. But the reality is that she wasn't anti-capitalist. Mm -hmm. She was actually for economic empowerment Wow. to protect our family, and that we combine those two of anti-slavery and mm -hmm. anti-capitalism, or That's they right. combine them, to make us feel like there's something wrong with us focusing on our money. But Harriet Tubman knew that she needed to have more than freedom. She needed to have a home so that she could protect her family. Amen to that. Yeah. And, and so that brings us back to the artwork. Now, after all this, and, and the thing is, a lot of people don't understand this. Mm -hmm. So when you started Adonis hearing the conversation yeah. that folks were having about your artwork, about yeah. your piece of artwork there. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking um, <laughs> as an artist? Yeah, see, you gotta have tough skin in this mm -hmm. business. And uh, it's, it's, I don't care what nobody says, you, you know, no artist, you know, would say, um, it's always on the job tra training because when you reach a certain level in your career, you have to take criticism, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know what I mean? Right. So. When I read those things online, mm -hmm. I felt sorry for those people because they they don't know who I am as a man. Um, they don't know what I've done in my community. And also, uh, I want them to, I wanted to reach the masses with Harriet Tubman, yeah. her legacy, what she stood for, the power behind her. I wanted to capture all of that, you know, you know, with, with a couple of strokes. And when... When the time came, um, when I when I saw the stuff online, I was um, I was disappointed a little bit yeah. because I knew that they didn't understand. Yeah, and they didn't, they they didn't understand the bank or what we were trying to do, and uh, we welcomed that, we embraced it, we love it. We know that one thing we know we know that they, that uh, they cared, that's so that's right. why that 
that entire conversation, I had to pause. I prayed a little bit. But um, now they know. And, so it's, not, and it's yeah. created a conversation. Yes, Terry. it did. Yes. yes, it has. Terry, it's created a conversation. It has. Um, and yes, we uh, really respect the feedback that we receive because we understand that people came away yeah. thinking Wakanda as opposed to the sign language gesture for yeah. love. Um, and we also um, appreciate, as, as Adana said, that they cared. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we got from this, that they cared. Well, what we also got back was that people were starting to have conversations that they weren't having before. So a lot of parents were saying that they didn't realize that a lot of, that their kids didn't know who Harriet Tubman was. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a surprise to them. They yeah. didn't. And so this started that conversation. There's the conversation about her being, you know, anti-capitalist, yeah. which um, again, I hope our community can do some research and find that she actually was for economic empowerment and her family does want that $20 bill to be released. And I think the other conversation is also about, about black banking mm -hmm. and about us focusing on our money. You know, we always say to people, first of all, you don't have to be black to bank black. <laughs> um, and that also, even if you don't bank with One United, there are, there are 21 other black banks in the country and, and they, they, we all need each other's support. That's right. You know, so all those are conversations that have been good. A lot of people say they didn't even know black banks exist. You know, there's also this like, <laughs> oh, it's really not black owned, you know, and it's like, no, it is. And they're like, they're like well, who's the white man behind the curtain? There's no white man behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> I say that, it comes in like, okay, who's really the owner here? Yeah, the sister right here. <laughs> yeah. This is the owner right here. Yeah. So you have a better yeah. idea. Yeah. But again, it did. It brought about that conversation yes. that we're having. And, and and one United Bank hasn't shied away from this stuff in the past. I mean, you've done things in the past that someone would like, like you said, yeah. you are unapologetically black. Right. So we have actually, I am glad you brought that up because we've supported a lot of movements because we understand that social justice impacts our economic well-being. So we actually put out uh, the Amir card. This is actually a mirror painting. We put out the Amir card in 2017 mm -hmm. to support Black Lives Matter. And that was during a time when people were saying Black Lives Matter was a terrorist group. And we're like, no, it's not. It's a movement that deserves our support. Uh, we did a Take a Knee campaign uh, back in 2000 and I say 19 yeah. um, with, or 2018 to 2019. Uh, with the ACLU and Be Me community, where we gave back for every account that was opened. Uh, because, again, we said that that movement, that, that push, deserves our support. So we have done, we, we did a town hall on the 1619, the New York Times 1619 project, because we do think that America needs to redefine black people as not the problem, but the solution. And so, I, you know, for us, um, Anytime we introduce a card, we get a reaction. And yeah, we know it's going to be a risk. Yes. We already know. Yes. We get <laughs> yeah. a reaction. I yeah. mean, we introduced the, the justice card yeah. when we, the countries that we come from, mm -hmm. were being called some, asshole. As, okay, asshole thank you. countries. Asshole countries. Mm -hmm. And we introduced the justice card with flags from Haiti, Jamaica, Barbados. We, oh, and we had that right yeah, behind sorry, you. Sorry. And that's why I started yeah, looking over yeah, here because I'm like, okay, you're naming all Ni the flags Nigeria, that are going <laughs> yes. I mean, we introduced the card because we know that mm -hmm. immigrants actually are contributors to America. And so for us, we wanted to celebrate our immigrants. So, you know, for us, every time we introduce a card, we step out there, yeah. we do get blowback. Mm -hmm. Usually, mm -hmm from white folks who say, you know, well, bank black is racist, and we're like, no, it's not. Like, we welcome everyone. Right. Um, but, you know, that's the kind of blowback we usually get. Uh, mm -hmm. This time, you know, we heard. We heard from our community. It's good to know <laughs> that they care, um, and we respect it. I mean, I'm just being clear. We, we respect the feedback that we've got. And, and Adonis, how mm -hmm. does it feel to have the support from one United Bank and, and Terry and have that support. When you started receiving that, yeah. you know, and reading some of the messages and some of the things that people were saying. Um, from a financial institute uh, to, I guess, you talk about urban America and corporate America and putting them together. I think it's amazing. Um, my son, he uh, 
um, he said, Dad, he said, this is incredible. He said, because the bank hasn't backed up for me. And he said that. He's 15. Wow. Yeah. So for him to say that, I mean, I was thinking that, mm -hmm. but when they actually, uh, you can see it online, how they, how the owners and everybody, you know, we, uh, if we put some out there, we stand by it, but they stood by me. And um, for them to be there, you know, they, they, I wasn't there standing alone, <laughs> but I took a lot of blows, you know. Yeah. But it was, um, I like to, uh, like I said, uh, like she said, we embrace the feedback. We love it. Um, it's important to hear from your friends and your foes because that's how you um, sharpen, like I told you before, how, how the pencil is sharpened. The pencil can only be sharpened if you take away, you know, certain parts, certain aspects of it. So uh, my thing is that we're going to continue to do what we do. Um, I think this, uh, again, not just because I bank here and I'm part of the family, but um, this is a beautiful place. Uh, we mean what we say, we say what we mean. We stand by um, what we do, and we're going to do it again. And Harry Tubman, like I said, she's the tip of the iceberg for what's coming. And, and, yeah. and Terry, you also, though, received a lot of positive feedback. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yeah. A lot of positive yes. feedback. And, and the card is actually doing really well. Yes, Very it well. is. It is. Um, so, actually, and I, I've talked about this, we have uh, increased our new accounts tenfold. And Harriet Tubman is the number one card, like by a, a landslide, of all the cards that they have to choose from. So it has been incredibly uh, successful, and a lot of people love it. You know, again, we still respect the feedback, yeah. mm -hmm. um, but I think that's, you know, there's also the other side of it where a lot of people are saying that uh, we, we do need to be on monetary instruments, you know. Yeah. We... We built this country, and we deserve to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. And we also uh, need to ensure that people know that, in fact, we've been very good as a community with money. You know, there's this whole thing about we haven't been good with money. No, we've been very good with money. We have faced a lot of discrimination. We have, you know, had to go over a lot of hurdles, as I say, from slavery mm -hmm. to Jim Crow mm -hmm. to redlining. You know, even yeah. today, a lot of discrimination is happening. And, and the banking industry. And yet we've overcome a lot of that to be where we are today. And, and I, you know, for us, we like to focus, like we like Be Me community, we like to focus on our assets and not our challenges. And so for us, the celebration is really about us focusing on our assets. Again, and I want to keep saying this, <laughs> we still respect the feedback, mm -hmm. um, but it has been incredibly successful. Yeah. And, and I know it's not going to stop here, oh, Adonis, no, 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 right? No, no. I, uh, <laughs> because as you, you've kind of hinted, uh, mm -hmm. we can expect to see some more artwork and more images coming out because that's the type of art you do. You like to, you like to cause a conversation, right? I like to capture emotion. Um, I like to create a, a movie in every one of my paintings. I want people to feel that image or that person and, and walk in it with me, you know what I mean? And kind of like touch into uh, my spiritual man and understand the man behind the brush. And I want to lose them for, I don't care if it's for 30 seconds. I want to, I want them to embrace who I am and what I, uh, you know, what I stand for and then they, you know, come back to reality. And I always, uh, when I paint, I paint as if I'm painting for one person. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, some, and when I do, like I said, uh, I said on um, my website that while I'm painting, I commune with God because I can paint for hours without eating, talking to people, and be focused and come back, snap back to reality. It's eight hours later, you know? So that's, uh, that's, what, it, that's, that's what it's about. And um, One United, they give me the freedom to, do, you know, to be me. Mm -hmm. And when, when I first met her, she said, I want you to be who you are, and I'm giving you the license to, to go. And when she pressed that button, that was a wrap, man, because I never had that in my... I've always been censored and, yeah. you know, I've been in the public eye for a long time, but I've always been censored. And uh, I think the Mural Project 2015 allowed me to be who I am, and I wanted to see... So I wanted to see us powerful, you know, in a power position in the public, in the public eye, with public art. So that's what it was about, man. Yeah. So you, you mentioned the Mural Project yeah. and also to be who you are. That's one of the things that we say to new employees. We say we want you to bring your authentic self here. And to be honest with you, sometimes it takes them like a year to like, you know, yeah. let their hair down or, you know, really become who they are because they're so used to, you know, having to sort of conform to, you know, some uh, way in which society expects us to be. And, mm -hmm. and I would say, hey, you, you, are, you are wonderful, you're blessed, you know, to be who you are. Um, 
And in 2015, which is when we began with Adonis, we asked him to paint a mural on the bank to represent really our black, the black community's authentic experience. When he painted the mural and we were about to unveil it, I said, well, let me take a look at it because he was in his <laughs> you know, studio painting this mural that we were going to put. It's 550 feet. It's mm -hmm. you know, huge. And I looked at it, and I was just like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I was like, okay. Okay, you know, get maybe, ready. Maybe I uh, get you know, ready. Get too ready. Far. Um, <laughs> because the mural um, has, uh, it has uh, Trayvon Martin. It has yeah. Michael Brown. Mm -hmm. But it also has a black man with a bullseye on his back. Mm -hmm. You know, and it has uh, the Confederate flag yeah. because the Charleston massacre yeah. had just happened. Uh, it has um, the Statue of Liberty, actually, with her back to us. Yeah. So it had some really powerful images. Um, it also sort of foreshadowed what was to come. Um, the wet foot, dry foot. If, yeah. if you look at it, it's 2015. That's when I painted it. Yeah. I have a Haitian boy. He's holding up wet foot, dry foot with a question mark. And then uh, before, right before Obama left office, which is 2016, that was the last one of the last things he changed on the way out. So I've been doing this for years. There's also a number that says 2027 in there. Um, God, he leaves me to, to, to leave numbers and images. I don't know why, but yeah. I listen to him. So I've been doing this for years. So if, I, if it comes out like the next card, if anything comes out in a movie later on, yeah. you already know, you can hear it right now. <laughs> exactly. I did it. I already did it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, be, before we close out, Terry, what's yes. the biggest takeaway you want folks out there to know that are watching this Facebook Live? Well, I mainly want them to know is that we are black-owned, unapologetically black, that we're here to build wealth in the black community, and that this uh, Harriet Tubman card was done in the spirit of love. Mm -hmm. Spirit of love for her mm -hmm. and her legacy, her full legacy, including her economic legacy. Um, and it was also done to really start a conversation in our community about that $20 bill and the fact that we need to focus on closing the racial wealth gap and that white people should not be the only people on money. We'll leave it at that. Terry Williams, thank you so much. Thank you. Very well said. Thank you. Thank you. Adonis, keep doing what you're doing, my it's brother. It's a pleasure, man. All God right? bless you, It sir. is a pleasure. You yep. too. Yep. You too. And thank you so much for watching this Facebook Live edition with One United Bank. Make it a great day.